Welcome to More Than Your Infertility Podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Dillon Snyder, IVF mindset coach and IVF mom. Just like you, I know the impact riding the emotional roller coaster of infertility has on your life and how easy it is to be consumed by it. And I plan to support you, remind you, and teach you how to be more than your infertility while you're in the wait for your baby. If going through infertility is harder than you thought, taking longer than you thought, and impacting your emotional well being, you're in the right spot. So, no more waiting. Let's get started with this week's episode. Today, we're talking about something that's often silent but ever present in the world of infertility it's fear. It's something that often comes up when I connect with incredible women who are navigating the challenges of infertility. It's a common desire to eliminate that fear entirely, to make it vanish from their lives. But here's the truth. Expecting fear to disappear is not only setting ourselves up for disappointment. It's also like wishing away the rain during a storm. It's just not realistic. And just like the rain, it does serve a purpose. This week, life took an unexpected turn, and I want to share a personal story with you. While it's not what I plan to talk about for today's episode, I believe this experience, although not directly related to infertility, it serves as a powerful reminder that the fear doesn't go away and that we can learn from and benefit from our fear. Before we dive in, a quick heads up. If you've ever been in a serious car accident, this episode might be triggering for you. And if that's the case, feel free to skip this week and catch us next time. And if you've decided to hear more, I want to share that this week I was in a car wreck on a main road during rush hour and the other car involved ended up flipping and landing on its roof. My IVF miracle, the one I hoped for, and prayed for, and cried for, and wished for, and did two rounds of IVF for, and paid out of pocket for, was in the car with me. And I am here able to tell you about it because miraculously, all three of the people involved in the wreck, which was my daughter, myself, and the driver of the other car, were all able to walk away. I'm still in a bit of shock that we all made it out okay. My daughter, with only a small scratch on her chin from hitting the five-point harness chest buckle, myself, and the man who was in the flipped car are all okay. While I'm experiencing some whiplash and bruising from the seatbelt, I am so grateful it's not worse. I am so grateful that my daughter is physically okay, and I am giving my fear the credit. You see, back when I was on my infertility journey, Fear whispered and sometimes even screamed at me that it might never work, that I might never become a mom. It was a terrifying thought, one I could hardly admit, even to myself. This weight was something I silently carried around with me in the background of my everyday life. And I believed that if I said it out loud, it might make it more likely to happen. And while the fear started as IVF never working for me, once I was pregnant, the focus of my fear changed to something happening to my daughter. In time, as I got closer and closer to my due date, my confidence did grow over the course of my pregnancy, but the fear never went away completely. So why am I sharing this? Because maybe you, like me, have the fear that IVF might never work or that you may never become a mom. Maybe you're afraid something might go wrong at every stage or you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Maybe you're afraid that you're too old for it to work or you missed your opportunity or it's too late for you. Maybe you've said things like, I'll believe it when I see it or I'll exhale once I hold my babies in my arms. If you have said or thought any of those things, one, you are not alone, and two, you're in the right place. Because here's the hard truth you need to hear. 
fear does not magically disappear when you see those two pink lines or even hold your little one in your arms. Instead, the focus of the fear just changes. And I want you to know that you can become capable to live with the fear. So how do you do that? Well, it's not by ignoring the fear like I did during our infertility journey, but instead by acknowledging it and understanding it. When you do that, you don't see fear as a problem and instead can see it as a companion and a guide. This is not the way I looked at it during my infertility days, but how I look at it now after learning tools to handle the fear. I believe because of my ability to live with that fear through every stage that started way back in my IUI days, it means I no longer make having a fear a problem and used it to keep my daughter safe in this week's wreck. Because of the fear of something happening to my daughter, I didn't ignore it or let that fear paralyze me and stop us from ever leaving the house. Instead, I acknowledged it was there. I understood why it was there. Like, duh, of course I want to keep my daughter safe. And I addressed it by prioritizing her safety in the way I could. That means putting her in a good car seat that's appropriate for her age, height, and weight. It means being the strict mommy of a first grader because I make her still use a five-point harness car seat when some of her classmates and cousins don't. It means I make sure that every time she clips in, it's done appropriately, tightly, and with the chest clip in the right spot. And because of the way I now look at my fear, I truly believe that my daughter was protected from the wreck. You see my diligence and attentiveness to the car seat details every time she rides in the car meant I was keeping her as safe as possible if the unthinkable happened. And y'all, the unthinkable happened. And she is okay because that car seat kept her safe as it was designed to do. So if you have the fear of IVF not working for you, the fear of a miscarriage, or the fear of challenges that come with motherhood, your fear won't go away. Your fear doesn't have to be a problem. And your fear could actually be helping you. Because that's what happens when you learn to coexist with it. So here's how you do that. Number one, you acknowledge that you have the fear. You say to yourself or you share it with someone else and you admit that it's there. You stop pretending it's not there and you stop trying to hide it. It can be as simple as saying, yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared we might do all of this and still not come out with a baby at the end of it. Number two is you understand why it's there. And I want you to know that your brain is wired to protect you, to avoid pain and discomfort. So if fear is surfacing, it's signaling that something matters deeply to you and not getting it will be painful and uncomfortable. This is where you could say to yourself or someone else, of course, I'm scared. I've wanted to be a mom my whole life. I'm trying everything and it hasn't worked yet. Number three is you stop looking at the presence of fear as a problem. Your fear has kept you safe in the past. So we benefit from having some fear. And when you look at it not as a problem, but instead as something trying to tell you something, you can learn from it. This looks like asking, what is this fear trying to protect me from? And in this example, it's trying to protect you from having a broken heart or feeling disappointed, which are two things we naturally want to avoid. And when you can look at it that way, it can make sense that you're fearful. And number four is you take action. You decide if the fear is enough reason to not do the thing, or you decide to use the fear to take action to help keep you safe or protected from the outcome you want to avoid. So in this case, you get to decide, do you stop moving ahead with IVF or you get to decide to focus your energy on what's in your control, like seeking the best doctor or following the med schedule as prescribed, listening to your expert doctor's recommendations and prioritizing healthy lifestyle choices. 
For those going through IVF, your fear might be helping to validate your desire for more information and influence you to get that from your double board certified expert doctor versus Google or a Facebook group. Your fear might be a reminder to assess and prioritize and focus on your lifestyle choices to help improve your IVF outcome and eliminate any room for regrets when all is said and done with your IVF journey. If you're afraid IVF may never work for you, it's not there because it's true. It's there because it's reminding you how much you care about having a baby and growing your family. And it's an opportunity to check in to see if there's anything more you can be doing to get the outcome you want. So here are the two key takeaways for you. One, it's not realistic to expect fear to go away. Instead, it just evolves as your situation changes. And two, the fear you have doesn't have to be a problem. Instead, consider the fear as a part of the infertility process, and you can learn to navigate both with grace. By understanding it, validating it, and choosing how to respond, you gain the power to coexist with the fear. And if you're interested in learning the coping skills to coexist with fear, my Hope Again coaching program might be just what you need. Feel free to apply for coaching at the link in the show notes so you can learn to live with and learn from the fear versus being fearful of the fear. And like I said to my daughter on Monday night, I want to say this to you too. You are so much braver than you think. And you are so much stronger than your fears. What you're going through is hard and it's okay to be afraid. Instead of trying to push away the fear and ignore it, let's listen and learn from our fears instead. Oh yeah. And don't forget to wear your seatbelt. So until next week, I'm sending you off with so much love and the reminder that you are more than your infertility. Thank you for being a part of More Than Your Infertility. If today's episode resonated with you, please consider sharing it on social media or with a friend. Your support helps us reach more women on their infertility journey, empowering them to break free from the grip of infertility shame and rediscover their hope. And before we part ways, I have a small favor to ask. If you've enjoyed the podcast, kindly leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps other women find this empowering community. Until next time, always remember, you are more than your infertility.